Do you get nervous when you hit the search bar? If you have a search term and it creates false positive, for example, virus, you can have computer virus and the biological form of virus. That means you have half of these search results irrelevant to what you needed. You can have false negative. Say, for example, you are searching for publication related to anemia with the US spelling. You're going to miss the other half that are going to be spelled with UK spelling with an A. It creates immense anxiety. I think in the very beginning of PhD, you don't know what are the important keywords, and it's almost feeling like only the seasoned researcher would have figured this out. And you know what? This can be overcome by exploring the list that you already have. And you can train yourself to learn this keyword looking into different suggested paper. So I think this is a wonderful tool for a new researcher. It's going to help you grow your reference list. Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time. This is the online community for you as PhD student to get motivation, peer support, and practical tips during your PhD. Researching could be quite like going into that rabbit hole. How can we follow up whether we have done a good job exploring the literature field or not? And I already have spoken about how to perform academic search in Web of Science as well as PubMed according to this top paper list that you have found. And I describe Research Rabbit as the other side of looking into the list saying what else is missing export it to Sotero and then start writing and citing this list of references that you have curated. That's why today I'm introducing you to Research Rapid. This is an exploration app. You can find out how are your reading lists connected? What else are out there? Today's video, I want to quickly show you a few things that I really enjoy using Research Rabbit, and perhaps that will inspire you to explore your literature list a little better. I have spoken to Mike and Ben several times now, maybe half a year ago. I realized they will stay free forever for researchers. Where were you back in my PhD? Where were you? If you enjoy my Zotero video, PubMed video, and Web of Science video on research, this is the one you need to bookmark and take notes. To start using Research Rabbit, you need to first use your email and create an account. You could also sign up for alerts on new papers. You will find yourself on this page that you will be asked to create your first collection. You can search either by title or DOI, which is the ID number of your journal. You can type in a search like you would have used PubMed. For example, I put COVID vaccine in children, which is a new research topic. And when you find a few papers that you think are relevant, you can simply drag and drop it to your collection list. You can also click on that paper and expand it to see the abstract of that work. If this is relevant, you can drag it also to your collection. This is how you can organically navigate PubMed and build a list. I have already shown you the more advanced search that you can perform on PubMed, and I think it's going to be really powerful if you combine advanced search on PubMed and Research Rabbit. I will demonstrate by using my list of references that I've generated from PubMed videos. In that video, I shown you how to use PubMed advanced searches and perform a bunch of filters. And in this list, I have included all of the Nature paper published in the last year that are clinical trials. I imported it into Research Rabbit. Start with the left side, which is the collection. I suggest you cherry pick the most important ones so that you can really see the connections of paper untangling some of this web. If you look at the list of paper, you see you can sort it by number of citation, you can sort it by date, recency, or first author name or last author name alphabetical order. You can click this purple note button and just quickly add your thoughts. Click on earlier work. It comes with a list of suggested paper where you can take a look by clicking on it. Notice on the top right side is actually number of citation. Sort by number of citation. You can immediately see the most cited paper already from this earlier work. Close any view that is not helping you. Click on visualize this paper. There are three buttons you can find. The first, earlier works. 
you will take a deeper dive into this older paper, find out who are the academic ancestor of this work. And then you can also find another button, which is later work that are citing this paper. Simply there are two color schemes. Each of these dots is the paper on your list. The green ones are already in your collection and the blue ones are the suggested paper from this exploration activity. If you have chosen similar work, you're going to find some more distant paper not immediately citing or being cited by this reference list but similar on the algorithm. So if you see a lot of lines citing each other, that means they are more connected in your research topic of interest. So say for example, you find the most highly cited paper and you want to add this to your collection, then you can click plus to this collection. Now you will find yourself having seven paper and the calculation of earlier and later work will change. Realize in this visualization view, you can have network and timeline. So if you put things in timeline, in my example of six paper, they are all published in one year window in PubMed. Perfect example to show you. Take a look at the earlier work. They are all before this collection of paper. And if you click later work, they are all coming out in the recent one year. And if you click similar work, in a sense, you get a more complex and all-rounded flavor of the academic publication history of your field of interest. Beside this visualization, go to these authors and actually look into all these key opinion author in your field. You can see the author by number of citation, publications, last name, and affiliation. The number on the top right is actually the number of times this person has co-authored a paper with these people in your collection. So as a recap, ResearchRabbit is a great platform that you can break free from keyword searches. You can make sure you're not missing anything besides that list of reference that you have. Like a Spotify for paper, it's going to suggest you some new references as you use it. In the end, I think it's wonderful that you can export the list to Zotero. I'm going to add a little personal touch how I would use ResearchRabbit. I would caution everyone always write down your immediate thoughts of how does this inform my research. Maybe you found three papers from the earlier work and six papers from the later work and you are highlighting the authors and you have a few actionable items to follow up on one note. Research Rabbit is just a vehicle of research and you are the driver of the vehicle and you still have a lot of role to play how productive that session is that you can still get mesmerized by this net and these connections so make sure you take active note like you're reading a paper you're actively reading instead of passively sitting there and like oh this is nicely written i will never get to that english level and where were i so as a quick recap i think research rabbit is a great platform to explore early work and cited work in your research field i also see the value of using this to explore and expand a reference list that you already given like a reading exercise. First application, you can impress your journal club next time by telling them this is the next paper we can read because of this citation relationship. Second application, you can use the same principle to review a paper, import all of these lists of references cited in a paper, whether or not this author has done a careful job exploring the literature. So I think when you are seeing the orphaned dots that people are not citing each other, maybe this is time you read into them and see why they are not cited are they because they're not relevant or they are just never cited for some reason. Then you can give a constructive criticism to the author. You could cite this paper that you missed, filled out this research blind spot. You can also reveal how inclusive conference is. Sometimes a conference can be just one school of thought instead of balancing all the argument that are existing in the publication. A lot of time people are lazy, they are citing whoever other people are citing. We need to be more intentional about why we are citing certain paper, be more inclusive to all kinds of opinion in your field. If you want to organize a conference, 
just by putting the collection in Research Rabbit, you can now find all the key opinion leaders in your field. Then you can invite them one by one, say, hey, would you like to come and give a talk in my conference? I think this is going to be a transformative tool for a lot of us. The third application of Research Rabbit is applying for postdoc or even PhD application. If you go to the author view, you can see who is working with whom. Oh, this is so powerful because even there is a research topic you like, you still want to know who is the leading author in your field. The basic of who is the starting leading author and how many papers is that person publishing and you can rank them by metrics. From the student standpoint, applying to grad school and postdocs, you will know where are the more established labs, where are the labs that keep getting funding. Turn on the last author button to filter out who are the important list of paper in your field because last author is usually the coordinating author, people who have the money. It's going to streamline your process of talking to the right person, find a position somewhere that is related to your research interest. Now, the fourth application of Research Rabbit is when you are presenting your field of research and you want to just quickly show what are the leading author in the timeline, you can select all of these most impactful paper and you can use a timeline view. Say, for example, this six paper that are published in Nature that has clinical trial of COVID vaccine. They are all the son and daughters of this leading mRNA discovery by Dr. Katerine Carrico. That was the leading paper. And I'm surprised by just importing this one year of recent paper, you can trace back the academic history of this research field. Save you a lot of time and you don't need a seasoned professor to tell you when was that paper published and what are the outcome of that paper. That sums up my investment investigation on this new tool. I hope you will enjoy using Research Rabbit as much as I do. Team Research Rabbit, thank you so much. You guys are wonderful. I anticipate you guys will tweet about your discovery on Research Rabbit. And if you do so, make sure to tag this team by this Twitter handle because I think they will really appreciate seeing how this is used and how their hard work is transforming the way we explore science and the way we do research. That concludes my initial report about Research Rabbit. I can't promise not to make another video on this because I'm so inspired by you guys and they will come whenever I have more ideas. Great job. And again, where were you when I was doing my PhD? If you think Research Rabbit is great for your team, guess what? They have recently launched shareable feature that you can just type in an email of your lab member and share your collection of your reading list to another person. It's like sharing your Spotify playlist. So I really hope you will give it a try and comment below. Do you already use Research Rabbit? Does this video help you navigate some new paper? And does my video help you write your recent manuscript? So comment below. I would love to see how this report is going to affect science and the making of science. Thank you for watching and until the next time. Gossiping when academic criticism go wild. Today, I like to talk about this topic of gossiping because you may never have a chance to learn this in a class or nobody ever give you a conversation about gossiping. But you know, this is the biggest research enemy 